This from Speaker's Corner. Thank you for joining us today. We understand you're one of the leading Christian evangelists at the corner. So we have brought you in to ask you some very difficult questions. To begin, if Allah slaps you, which hand did he use? This is a very, very good question, and I can answer it not in one minute, not even 30 seconds. In 10 seconds, I can answer this question. It is clear, in the name of Allah, Wala, he, he says he has a right hand. He also has another right hand, sort of like this. But we know that when he talks about his right hand, it can be either hand. It depends on which one he wants to use in that moment. So wallahi, this is simple. I have answered this question in only five seconds. Praise be to Allah. Thank you. Can you disprove the perfect preservation of the Quran in under one minute? I can do it in just 30 seconds. And here we go. So that every Muslim believes that the Quran ultimately comes from the Uthmanic Codex. The problem is that there's actually multiple Uthmanic Codex, so even from that point alone they have variants in them, so that means the Quran is not properly preserved. Ibn al-Jazari canonized 10 different Qalat, which is another word for reading, which is what the Quran means in reading. Therefore, there are at least 10 Qurans according to al-Jazari. We can go further than that. We can actually say at some point there was even 14 ones. And if we look at the early Umar, there was at least 25 different Qurans in use just after Muhammad died, which means that there are Imams that were preaching Qurans that were not canonized and therefore not correct right after Muhammad. Therefore, the Quran is not perfectly preserved. But Chris, many Islamic scholars simply say that the Qiraat and the Aruf are just accents. Like Buttayda Buttado. Well, you see, that's why you're wrong, because we know that there are two people, Umar and Hisham, who according to the Sunnah, which is authentic Sunnah, they actually disagreed on the Quran, on Surah Al-Fakan, which is Surah 25, about precisely what that said, even though they both came from the same tribe of Quraysh, which tells us that this is not simply a case of dialects, this is actually something much more significant. They argued about what the Quran actually said. But Chris, Caliph Uthman and the rest of his scribes all agreed upon what the Quran was during the recension. So how do you respond to this? So Uthman, he standardized the Quran into 114 surahs, but he did so without the approval of two of Muhammad's greatest reciters, Abdullah ibn Masud and Nubai ibn Kab, both of whom disagreed within themselves over how many surahs are in the Quran. One said 111, one said 116, but Uthman standardized it to 114. He then destroyed all of the Quranic material. He made other Qurans illegal to own, thereby making sure that no one would ever find out that he has indeed established the Qur'an. He's made the Qur'an what it is today. Chris, some Islamophobes, like Jay Smith, believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not exist. How do you respond? So, Muhammad of the standard Islamic narrative that Muslims believe did not exist at all. We know this for many reasons. First of all, Mecca has no known historian documented before any time up to the time of Muhammad and beyond. We know that Mecca doesn't have any good vegetation to actually sustain large populations, which supposedly it did, because the Islamic narrative said that it was a center of trade. It says that Mecca was the city that was founded by Adam and then later on again by Abraham. And yet there's no reason to think that Abraham traveled anywhere near the Hijaz or that Adam was there. So really, Muhammad exists, but only in your head. I see. Thank you. Chris, Islam is full of good advice that are even still relevant today. From your understanding of the Sunnah, what is the greatest piece of advice that Muhammad gave? The best piece of advice that Muhammad ever gave can be found in the trusted collection of Bukhari. Bukhari 5517. It was narrated Abu Musa al Ashari when he said that he heard the Prophet say that he ate some chicken. To us, chicken is everything. Chicken is the basis of life, it is the very foundation of our belief. We have the Quran, the Sunnah, the chicken. These things to us are the very reason we became Muslims to begin with, and some other things regarding Aisha. But regardless, it's most of the chicken. So for us, Chicken is the best. Oh, no. Let's go to KFC. Okay, let's go to KFC.